uh, good morning everyone uh, so uh, in this video i'm going to uh, talk on books on art of writing um, let me start um, by highlighting why academic writing is hard uh, if you're in academia either as a student or as a as a scientist or a um, in a teaching profession, most of your time is uh, spent on writing, um, be it a grant proposal writing or research paper writing. And you might think the content or the technical content of the um, grant proposal or the paper is more important. But equally important is your writing skills. How well you're able to communicate your ideas to the readers uh, plays an important role. Though it is an important skill, it is rarely taught in school. Uh, in grad schools, there are courses on academic writing, but they are mostly non-credit courses, which people complete it just for the uh, sake of um, formalities. And if you ask students to list all the reference books for, say, for example, masters in economics or some other subject, 99 out of the 100 times, uh, you'll find that there are no books uh, on academic writing. So though it is not taught, professors expect students to master this on their own. And when students struggles, um, uh, when the student struggles to master this skill, um, then um, student has to go back to the professor uh, to, to help uh, with that. But what I have um, found out in my limited experience is even the many senior people, uh, the professors also struggle um, with writing. So they themselves struggle with writing. Uh, so students mostly are left on their own to improve their skills. And thankfully enough, there are some awesome books on this topic. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to two such books. The first book on my list is On Writing Well uh, by William Zinzer. I don't want to give you a comprehensive summary of the book. I think if you are in a stage where you have written some 10 pages or a couple of articles, and you know that the article or the your writing is not good enough, but you also don't know how to improve your writing. Then reading this book will be an experience in itself. So I want you to experience that and I don't want to give you too many spoilers. But I also want to emphasize or to convince you why you should read. So I'll pick some points from the book which got stuck with me uh, after reading it. So first one is, the writing is a skill and not a gift. So I used to think that some people are just gifted and they can write well. But after reading this book, I realized it's a skill which you need to cultivate. And revision is the key for good writing. When I, whenever I read some really good books or some good papers, I'll be like, ah, oh, this is so good. This man must be gifted. And in my head, he just sits in front of the computer, simply types and the draft is ready at one go and he'll send it for publication. But really it is the case. Everyone, every draft goes through many, many stages of revision. The first draft of almost every writer is a messier one. The final product that you're saying is, has gone through many rounds of revision. So if your first draft is not that good, don't worry. The important part in writing well is revision. So keep revising it, keep improving it. And this quote, the next quote I have directly picked from the book, examine every word you put on paper, you will find surprising number that don't serve the purpose. Uh, Zinsir suggests that uh, after you finish your first draft, examine each sentence very closely. If any word, is not serving any purpose in the sentence, which means even when you remove that word, the sentence remains the same. It's 
grammatically correct, it is conveying the meaning that you intended it to, then it is better to remove that form. This is also called as economic writing, which means conveying the message with least number of words. According to Zenzuer, the simpler your writing, the better it is. Complicated writing, you might think that you will project yourself as intelligent, but it works the other way around. Think of your favorite paper that you have read maybe in the last week, last month, or for your MSc or master, uh, PhD thesis. And the paper that you remember is the paper you have understood well. That is the paper you could follow every step that they have done. That is the paper, the, meaning, uh, the findings you could comprehend easily. So if you can write with more clarity and with more simplicity, that will be better. At the same time, if you cannot inspire yourself with your own writing, you cannot inspire the others. You should also spend time in a great beginning and end. Think of a TV serial that you watch or a Netflix series. They make sure to end each episode such a way that it creates some curiosity and makes the viewers to come back for the next. Similarly, you should write in a way that each paragraph ending creates curiosity uh, in the minds of the reader to come back for the next. And the purpose of introduction in a paper is to convince the reader that what value they are going to get by reading your own work, right? Uh, in this world where the attention span is so limited, people won't read your work unless they get something out of it unless they get some new information, unless they get something which uh, they value. If you cannot convince the reader that it is going to be valuable uh, uh, and it's worth the value of their time, then they are not going to read. And that's the purpose of the introduction. Let me come to the second book, uh, William Strunk and, uh, Strunk and White, The Elements of Style. Few people consider it as the greatest book ever written on writing. And uh, my mentor used to tell me that if you want to keep one book on your desk always, then this is that book. I don't know how to, um, how, what are the other ways to convince you that this is a book that you ought to read, but I wish uh, that you spend some time on this book. What is there in this book? So in this book, um, it's a very small book, probably 150 pages max. Uh, uh, some of the points that I've picked from the book, uh, some of the sections in the book are like, why to use active voice or passive voice, when to use, how to use, avoiding uncertainty like may, uh, could, would, and how to minimize the use of those uh, and how to avoid overstating your argument, particularly um, the case with research papers. Definitely we want to sound confident. We want to put our argument in front in a convincing way. But while trying to do that, what we also tend to do is overemphasize, use two strong sentences, repeat the sentences over and over again. Um, the third important thing is um, use of punctuations. You might think, ah, this is high school grammar stuff and I know everything, where to put comma and where to put semicolon, but it's more nuanced than that. Uh, we may commit many mistakes while uh, using the punctuations and proper punctuations improves the writing by a huge margin. Uh, for example, M dash, N dash, semicolon, colon, just the dash, uh, when to use, how to use. This book offers very practical guide on those. Um, and why this book sticks out as one of the best is that all the concepts in the book are demonstrated with examples. For instance, uh, they talk about the punctuations uh, then they give you one sentence where the punctuation is not proper. You read the sentence, then you try to identify the mistake. Then they give another sentence where the punctuations are proper, same sentence, but with proper punctuations. Then you realize how, 
how the sentence is completely transformed now and why does it look better so that it also helps you to um, remember it well. Then there are some uh, wonderful resources on YouTube. There are many, many YouTube sessions on writing, but if I have to pick one, it is always this Chicago Writing Lab, Larry McNary. Uh, there are probably five or six workshops on YouTube um, with like um, ranging from one hour to one and a half hour. But let me promise you this, it's worth every second of your time. He's amazing. And I don't even dare to explain what is there in those videos. Uh, you shouldn't just watch it. And as a bonus content, there is a TED talk on how to avoid death by PowerPoint. I think um, this is one of the most interesting TED talks that you get to watch. Uh, I hope this uh, video all is of use to you. If you find it useful, please do share it to others. Um, whom you think this video is also going to be uh, useful. Uh, thank you so much.